Hello friends. Welcome back to All on Long. This is a medical video lecture surgery. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic. Pseudo membranous zero membranous colitis so is this zero membranous colitis is also named, known as antibiotic antibiotic associated diarrhea or colitis so guys the name itself indicates the antibiotic associated colitis because of the use of antibiotics he has developed the colitis so now you know that which patients develop this pseudomembranous colitis remember these patients who those patients who have been admitted in the hospital for example admitted for a reason of uti that's a urinary tract infection or admitted for what you call pneumonia or meningitis or any systemic infection he has been admitted in the hospital and he is on antibiotics and after starting soon after starting antibiotics or 3 to 4 days or sometimes it can takes up to 6 months also if he has developed a diarrhea then the first thing that should strike your mind is it could be a pseudomembranous colitis proved otherwise okay so this will be the case scenario in usml examination any patient admitted in the hospital or was treated one week back in the hospital now he has developed a diarrhea or a sign and symptoms of the colitis then think of pseudomembranous colitis right guys so there are two important what you call drugs that are associated with this pseudomembranous colitis before that i would like to tell you what is the causative organism for that it's nothing but Clostridium difficile. Clostridium difficile. You know Clostridium difficile. We uploaded a video, microbiology video on Clostridium difficile. Okay, it's a very important bacterium for your USMLE examination. So try to watch that video. Okay, guys. So the gram positive it's a gram positive remember it's a gram positive bacteria and it goes very well in a blood agar and regarding the detailed information of this what you call the microbiological features of clostridium difficile we have discussed in a micro microbiology medical video lecture right this clostridium difficile if this is the intestine or colon it can be on the colon, it can be on the rectum. They are normally present, okay? Or sometimes they may not be in the intestine. When the patient takes the antibiotics, okay, this is the antibiotic, okay? Or this is the antibiotic. If he takes the antibiotic, it kills the normal organisms. That is a normal flora, what we call. When it kills the normal flora, there is an opportunity for these bacteria to come over here and start the infection and first they will grow and they will produce a toxins and the toxins produced by them are two or three types toxin A, toxin B and binary toxin the function of the binary toxin has not been established regarding toxin A and a B these are really very important toxins because they form a yellow plaques that is known as a pseudomembrane 
on the colon, on the mucosa of the rectum or mucosa of the colon. Remember, right, guys? So this is a really very important what we are talking over here. The toxin A and a toxin B are glucosyl transferases that targets and inactivates one family that's known as RHO family of GTPases. GTPases. Okay? Right, guys? So we're not going to go in detail. That's not at all required. Remember that it produces a toxins A, B, okay? And these toxins, uh, they are glucosyl transferases that targets and inactivates RHO family of GTPase. Okay? Now what happens? They form acetomembrane over the mucosa of the colon or the rectum, right? And these acetomembranes are composed of These pseudomembranes are composed of exudate made of inflammatory debris like white blood cells, fibrin, necrotic cells, okay, cellular debris, what you can't call, okay. But remember, this if the patient on a what you call, if you do a colonoscopy or a proctoscopy and you don't find a pseudomembranes, it doesn't mean that the patient doesn't have the pseudomembranes colitis. But if the patient has a pseudomembrane colitis, pseudomembrane, then, and there is a history of use of antibiotics, then you are almost sure that the patient is having pseudomembranes colitis. Right, guys? So which are the two antibiotics? Most often, they cause what you call pseudomembranes colitis. They are clindamycin and ampicillin. But remember, almost all the antibi antibiotics can cause this, what you call pseudomembranous colitis. Okay? And this syndrome is very common in hospitals and the, what you call, institutions, right? Okay, now let's talk about what you call them. Uh, the symptoms, you know very well, the sign and symptoms are nothing but they will have severe diarrhea, okay? And that they will have what you call uh, the pain, abdominal pain, right? So, you know very well about the sign and symptoms of colitis. Now, let's talk about the diagnosis. How do you diagnose the disease? The disease is a history of a diarrhea after the treatment with the antibiotic is a suspicious, remember. Okay, should always raise the suspicion. Either you do proctoscopy, proctoscopy, or colonoscopy, 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 that reveals the serial membranes. And we know the serial membranes are composed of exudates made up of inflammatory debris of white cells, fibrin, necrotic cells, cellular debris, right? Okay, and a stool sample should be sent for what you call a C. difficile toxin titer. Stool sample, stool sample. Okay, guys, stool sample. Remember. Now, let's talk about the treatment. First thing what you have to do is the causative antibiotic should be stopped. Stop the using antibiotic. Right? So, you can see what you call some control. Right? And metronidazole. Metronidazole or metrogel metronidazole. The treatment of choice and may be given orally or intravenously. Oral vancomycin is also effective but is reserved for a refractory and a persistent cases because the vancomycin is really very costly like $200 for a, what you call $200 for vancomycin and this is going to cost less than $1. So metronidazole is the best. The first thing you should do is stop the antibiotic, start with the metronidazole, see whether there is a change. If there is no change, the symptoms are increasing, is not comfortable, then you can start with what you call a vancomycin. Constipating agents should be avoided, like a loperamide. Remember, cholesteramide may be administered to bind the toxin, but it may also inhibit the therapeutic antibiotic and therefore seldom be indicated. Recurrence is common in 25% of patients, require retreatment, 
okay and remember the very important point over here is the metronidazole the metronidazole is a again the agent of choice if the patient initially responded to it means six months back he was treated with for with uh, metronidazole for pseudomembranous colitis but again he has developed pseudomembrane colitis then again you can use the metronidazole right guys abdominal colectomy with ileostomy has been required for rare cases okay or a fulminant vertical pseudomembranous colitis so these are the what you call the um, uh, brief information a medical video lecture on a pseudomembranous colitis there has been a randomized control trial have suggested that the use of what you call lactobacillus casei lkc or lactobacillus bulgaricus lactobacillus bulgaricus bulgaricus or streptococcus what you call thermophilus streptococcus thermophilus okay use of these what has been shown some improvement but guys um, there has not been what you call definitive uh, results of this okay guys and there are some studies that show that the PPI as a proton pump inhibitors um, uh, are a risk factor for a C. difficile infection okay and uh, what you call pseudomembranous colitis but some studies have shown like case control studies have shown no results of it thank you so much for watching this video i'm sure you got an information please do share our videos and please please try to what you call tell your friends and subscribe watch our videos and if you have any feedbacks do tell us thank you so much for watching this video take care